Okay, so we have finally come to the end of season four of The Boys. This eight episode season, we're going to have our thoughts, we're going to discuss, and we're going to, uh, yeah, just go around and see how we each felt about this season. Um, how about we start with Scott? Since he's nice. been Scott's been being gone from the channel the longest. So, <laughs> it's like, so let's start with Scott. Scott. <laughs> We're That's popcorn good. reading. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think about this season of the boys? Yeah, no problem. Um so overall I think I enjoyed the season watching it, but I don't think it was good as good as season three. I think overall I enjoyed season three more. I had more fun with it. Uh, except for the ending. And this season sort of felt more like the ending times eight a little bit <laughs> <laughs> times eight for each episode the ending because <laughs> there's always some sort of like weird logic behind certain scenes in my opinion and like uh, we can get into it a bit more later but for now i enjoyed it but i feel like it was a pretty flawed season overall how about you guys yeah uh oh you have to popcorn someone <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I think I, I agree um, for the mo most part where it's like, you know, The Boys has been so consistently good season over season that it's always going to be like solid television, or at least that's what we come to expect. Um, so, you know, it's really apparent if like there's one season that's like, you know, not as good. And I think this one is maybe like not as good as the other seasons. I agree with that. There are some like story beats that like don't hit for me. There are some things that I think are being like a little dragged out or some other things where I'm like, wait, you know, we talked about this last season. Like, why are we now kind of like almost doing, going a different direction or not mentioning something at all, you know? Um, But yeah, I mean, I still enjoyed it. I enjoyed it overall. There's some decisions that I'm like, oh no, like, why did they do that? But I'm still I'm still looking forward to the final season. I think the thing that got me through this was like, okay, this is the penultimate season. So it's always going to be a little bit of a schlump so that like the final season can be better. And I mean, that's my expectation. That's what I hope is going to happen. Uh, but yeah, that's yeah. my general impression. Yeah, to give a more, I guess, counter to it i i definitely was a little bit disappointed with this season i mean i definitely was entertained but i think what got me through is number one knowing there was going to be one more season and then number two i felt like it's positives wise i think the um homelander that actor just knows how to pull like he just knows how to keep me like entertained and see things what's going on mm -hmm. certain things they did with a train and even the deep that was very interesting but i feel like a lot of the season problem is just the story beats again were weak and i kind of felt like they were too heavy mm -hmm. with the politics they're kind of pushing a certain agenda to a point where i was just like okay i mean i know there's an election coming up but like come on like i want to watch the boys i don't want to just watch the, why you should vote for a certain people but so mm -hmm. I, there was a little bit a lot of the things that were missing that i really loved about the boys was kind of sheltered with this season and yeah uh, really hurt it for me watching the experience but overall again no, i still was entertained like i won't say it wasn't something so polarizing that i yeah. wouldn't want to watch it but at the same time if the level of if, the, if this was the level of the boys going on i'd be okay of not seeing it basically yeah <laughs> that you've brought up a lot of good points i feel like if we can get a more a little more detailed now i do you did kind of remind me of like some some nitpicks that i had um what about Osino? and i yeah, we can leave those. Yeah. <laughs> Popcorn OC. I mean, sure, yeah. We can we can start going into some details um now that we've talked about it. But yeah, I think generally What about I, <laughs> generally I appreciated the season. I definitely think it was a step a bit of a step down from season three, just because uh not just because, but like primarily because like Jensen Ackles killed it in season three. And like <laughs> his personality true. really like brought a, a certain level to that. And now we're kind of missing that in season four, which you know is understandable, but um, but yeah, it was hard for for that to be filled with other characters. Um, and I agree, I think certain story beats, um, certain character story beats were a little bit 
not as good as others uh and we can go into details now i suppose yeah, um finally. i think that <laughs> i'll go like one of the things that i loved about this season was everything around sister sage um her character and the story with her between her and homelander i thought was all of that was great like the, all, that interaction and watching her conniving and, and planning all these things behind the scenes all the contingencies upon I, contingencies i see I, disagreement in chuka's face a little bit a little bit like I, I i do agree with sage i think she was a cool character concept wise and so many things that played out i think the only thing i had an issue was the idea of her i mean i get it because her I, her brain is what makes her a genius so if she takes some of her brain away she becomes dumb but i just didn't like that scene where she gets shy and she's just completely yes. like an idiot and then it's just like oh I that's what it. happens i love i don't that. know i, I know. think the hilarious. internet disagrees that was like the most that was like, hilarious gift and shared I mean, moment of the boys that i, saw I guess on it's this season it's yeah. it's funny but at the same time it just i don't know it just seems too it's like convenient. superman's kryptonite it, it just like seems kind of annoying it, I mean, yeah it seems yeah. too convenient and then i think i hate but, when but they do it, that how is it convenient though like in what way was it convenient like he like for example that time where um what's his name mother milk or something mother mother's milk. milk mother's milk he he shoots her and then she becomes so dumb at that point that now she can't speak in the whole uh what's it called can't speak in that whole um there that whole conference meeting, thing yeah. the meeting yeah, yeah like she just becomes that and i just but the thing I don't is know. that like but the thing is that like her plan still worked even though she couldn't like that's the the, the genius of of Sister yeah, Sage, but, but like yeah, the I, fact that even though she wasn't in like hold, even hold though on, like there were certain things that she didn't account <laughs> for her plan still worked out in the end okay this is this is one thing that i feel like i really dislike is like when geniuses or like like the evil masterminds are always like oh yeah all according to plan but honestly she could have easily died that moment if could MM... she? Yeah. how does she like she's a <laughs> like i think one of the things that like people brought up that i think is really valid is that um this season kind of showed or like reintroduced how difficult it is to kill soups in this world and we've kind of uh, got away from that with previous seasons but yeah i, I think it the the ease of kill like especially if you remember season one like figuring out how to kill soups is like such a big thing and i don't think it's necessarily like she could have died easily in that i i think well, her brain regenerates that. yeah her brain this regenerates but thing. her body is not like like super like her shot her heart if if M.M. was actually a decent agent, <laughs> he would have finished the job. Or he could have like shoot fainting. her heart. Exactly. And then if, she, if her heart is dead, she's gone. She's gone. She's dead. <laughs> and she, she like, fell into that. She had no idea. Yeah, so exactly. I I, that's why, to me, she seems pretty incompetent overall. Did she have but no there... idea? No, she knew that they were, like, because, like, she was leaking information to A-Train to give to the the boys. Right, but, like, she got shot. I, but no, sure but she knew but plan. she knew that they were <laughs> gonna be there like she knew and she just walked in to get shot you know you know Wait, like, no, <laughs> it is hard it is hard to to kill them though like truly like okay. i think I that yeah, it reinforces I, that I for I, sure plus they're not that was like kind of like a push came to shove moment because they're not randomly like they're not it's it's a big choice to kill a, a member of the seven like they I, they're not the boys aren't like in yeah, they're not just trying to like they're kill not, them off. Yeah, they're not gonna, randomly. especially uh, oh my gosh. super in the seven. Guys, guys, it's not something that they're they're gonna what? do out of the blue. Why would you not kill their evil mastermind that like is super <laughs> smart and knows everything? I like, mean, why didn't uh, why didn't Starlight kill Firecracker when she was she, beating her? Because she's oh, a dumbass. True. Exactly. <laughs> well, no, that's not, that's not, there's, there's reasons why they don't kill these people. It's not just they're like not... oh, we're just gonna kill them whenever we get the chance. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait, they they took out the guy that could continuously multiply that, but he's that not a member of the seven right right but firecracker is literally weaker than that person <laughs> there's no question about that they yeah. could have easily taken her out I they think could that... have but they still chose not to <laughs> which is She's so still... dumb i think that's like so out of character for butcher you know what i mean uh, butcher, was butcher wasn't no butcher i don't think butcher was there no, when butcher was there butcher was there Wait, Butcher was not inside the inside the no, not, not the sage scene, but the the scene where Firecracker's friend died. 
the oh. multiplayer guy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's but that was yeah, even yeah. that was even before she joined the seven. Yeah, but like she's clearly it she's clearly someone who is a soup and butcher hates all soup. and I, I mean yeah i'll say that like that that whole sequence was a little bit weak for me because like they just let her get away exactly but but, but i like other than that like <laughs> i don't think that <laughs> it's a big thing it's they, it's, they still don't want to kill highly visible soups because that's just gonna push the their agenda wait, even further wait, wait, of so like so they, they killed the multiplying guy on on her stream <laughs> <laughs> no nobody knew who the f that guy was like she, you know she was like a about to be part of the seven all right and it's like again like if they they there can they can spin it to like oh look this terrorist group is targeting soups the people that are here to protect you do you want this america you know like which is i mean something that's... that sage knew by the way sage <laughs> knows this you guys like we should have to tell yeah. you this major plot convenience. okay my it's, thing with sage is like I, I'm, I i I'm, i i like super smart characters i just Sometimes I feel like it's lazy writing when it's just like, oh, I knew the whole time, but there was no like setup of them showing. No, that. there was like it kind of right. No, 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 no. No, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Okay, setup. There was clear setup. If you paid attention, there was clear setup. Where <laughs> obviously, A Train made it clear, not made it clear, but like Sage knew that A Train was the the mole the whole time, yeah. and it was clear that she did. And so everything that A Train is leaking to the boys uh sage knows that this is the information that the boys are getting so she's making plans with that in mind so i'm like, talking about sense i'm talking about the ending i know we're skipping but the ending part where she comes in and then uh -huh. you know she goes to homeland and he says oh everything went according to plan and he's like because she was supposed to be kicked out and all of that stuff i for me that seems like i don't know it just reminds me of young justice where yeah, at the end dude, of season three they're dude. all like hey light the light just lost a bunch of people and they're like like oh this is part of our plan you know like yes. it just it, it seems like one of those like oh because they're the smart villain they have to say that like i didn't feel like okay. it was completely earned it yeah, was exactly, just that's that. dude that's exactly how i felt i i immediately I thought of young justice I disagree. That's like, no, because the week before, everybody was like, oh, how is this the smartest character if she gets booted out of the seven by Homelander? And then now, the week later, you got people saying that, oh, now she's the smartest person. She's, <laughs> she is she the planning. smartest, but like, I come think on. the argument There's is no that winning with this girl. It wasn't written, there could be like a little bit better storytelling. Like, yeah, it could exactly. have been a little bit more uh, involved. Kind of like showing yeah. her, and I and I process. still think she's one of the dumbest characters for the fact that she walked into the room to get shot and could have easily died if Butcher was there or or. If I like... don't think she, I don't think they can all easily die like that though. No, I'm saying just Sage, just Sage, because like I said, are we just she... assuming that she would have died if she got hit in the heart? In the yes, heart, because she yes. literally yeah. said out loud that her. her she she can die she said that out loud but her brain regenerates well they all can die no no no, no. she said that <laughs> like... her body her body's weak as in like it's normal like it can be pierced but her brain is the thing that regenerates here's uh, something um don't like don't the boys have like a pretty detailed portfolio of all the supers and their powers like wouldn't they know that her brain regenerates was it purposeful that mm shot her in the head because he knew I it wouldn't. I, like, I, I, would, I, I doubt her. that because I feel like they didn't really know her far. yet. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I they got to that, that point where they knew her. I feel like they did know but her. even still, but, like okay. the reason why I'm questioning it is like, even with the bullet wound, it's not like just her brain healed. Like her whole skull healed. Like it's it's not like it's just yeah. it's just the brain that like she's a soup. Yeah, like, yeah. To to OC's point, I mean, we saw like Starlight literally like almost rip her whole hand off, like trying to escape the cuffs at the end of the uh -huh. season, and she right. was pretty okay by but the end of things, again, and she again, still guys. fought the, the again, Skinwalker. Every soup oh is God. different. Every soup is different. Yeah, which is and why I'm like, no, they're all really strong though. No, they no, all I, pr can I heal. promise you. I promise you. Sage has said out loud that like her body is normal, except exactly. For her I promise but you, she said that out loud. But compared to not like compared to soups uh, like or compared human. to humans, they've killed. I just so think many it, she said guys, normal. <laughs> and if she has a normal body, I guarantee you, they could kill her. She doesn't have a normal body. <laughs> a normal body. Okay, okay. I think what he means by normal body is like besides her brain. Yeah, like she has like obviously she has normal lungs. Sorry, sorry. All right, well, that's 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 all I got.
<laughs> okay, point well, of contention. Let's, let's just that's, move on. <laughs> it's like a metaphor for the whole season. I think this season was very divisive. Yeah. There you go, I folks. Mean, but, you know, if you, I mean, you want to move on along the same lines, let's talk about the sheep episode. Because, like, <laughs> why, why did Newman blow up the sheep? You know what I mean? Like, were they that strong? I don't know. There's, like, some I think yes. they were strong. But she what? couldn't blow them up at all? She, she blew up the chicken, though. That was that was beat up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was weird. Couldn't... Do you think like... it takes, like, so much energy for her to blow up? No, because she was, like, that one time in the court, she blew up, like, multiple people's heads. Okay, yeah, that that's that's a little... Yeah. Silly. And then, and then like, silly. she's supposed to be super durable as well, right? But then... Yeah. But Spoilers. then we got the the V up cancer that killed her like no problem whatsoever. You know? Oh yeah, that scene. Man, I, I didn't like the way she died. That was way too cheap for her death to be like that. Like I was just Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> and that was like a character that a lot of people like too. So yeah, it's, exactly. it's just, the power levels sad. are so all over the place that it's it's hard to keep up with like that's How true. Are they? You know what the I mean. The boys isn't known for consistent power levels amongst the supers, though. And that mm -hmm. actually brings up a little nitpick of mine. Is I actually read this tweet from someone that kind of like summed up some feelings I have, where they were like, "Oh, like man, the boys is so good, but this kind of makes me want a good like superhero show from someone who actually like likes superheroes, you know." <laughs> because it's just like it's it's a lot like it's a lot of dumping on heroes like all the time and it's like yeah. even though I, like in the beginning i didn't want a train to have a redemption arc now i kind of want him to have one because i'm like i need like one hero to be like kind of good and like i yeah. like a redemption arc he's getting there and I mean, it's like hey. at this point i'm like i need like some of them to be okay like yeah give me because cool a, but yeah we are getting a lantern core show from the creators of um, oh yeah of course of uh true detective so yeah john that david washington john stewart i'm pushing I think, that agenda i wish i thought you were announcing uh, no. <laughs> cool, um no that would be cool uh, but yeah, that was um, <laughs> that, that was that was something. I also will say, yeah, the the A Train Redemption I think was something that um, I really appreciated in this season as well. I think that they did a good job, kind of keeping us on our toes with that because I was expecting him to be killed <laughs> as the last sure. episodes yeah. came through. Yeah. Uh, and so they kept uh, they they did do a good job with that. I don't know if they're gonna have him be like a an unofficial boy in in the final season, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. How I hope goes. so. I mean, that would be a waste if he just left. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Or at this point, if they killed him, like I wouldn't like that either. I mean, they kind of did that with oh, what's her name, Queen Maeve. She's still out there. She's so, alive. Yeah, hopefully, she comes back. Too. She's alive, but the point is, she could just be, you know gone yeah. like we didn't see her this season so i think yeah. we'll see her again at least one more time last season right yeah for we'll sure like, we should yeah hopefully there's some good just like this season they tried their best to fit in some like easter eggs for actors that were probably way too expensive to have on for more than a couple episodes like sean carlo esposito hopefully we get like some good couple, yeah that's what was missing uh, <laughs> yeah hopefully i know he was i know his absence his, was felt was great yeah but yeah, so hopefully we get some good I feel like cameos that, next season. I wish we got him in a better episode, but yeah, Jean Carlos' yeah. appearance was, was great. I agree. And that's, I mean, that's, so to a positive, I think some of the strongest things this season were individual performances from people. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, like, Huey's been great this entire season, and a lot of horrible shit happened to him. A lot of, like, yeah. disrespectful ass stuff that I'm See, like, this doesn't need to happen to Huey again and again. And I, he, <laughs> he took it on the chin. He was still great. Yeah. Um, like, that's where, that, I, mm -hmm. yeah, that's where I, I start to feel like that was one of my gripes with this season was Huey's storyline with his dad. I yeah, felt like yeah. it was a lot. drawn out very like, hey, out as, as someone who just recently lost her father, I can actually, you know, You're take valid. the time to appreciate the moment. I thought I, I was going to say, because so, I was going to go yeah. into how good the performances <laughs> were. Um, Simon Pegg, opposite of Huey's, of, what's his name? Jack Quaid. Mm -hmm. um, th that was a really strong performance from the both of them. I thought that was very good. And like, even him talking to his mom, like, 
he, he had some time to shine there. So I, I appreciated that. Also, Erin Mori Moriarty's scene where she's acting opposite herself as the shapeshifter, I thought was really strong. Like, I was actually like, super surprised. Not that I think Erin Moriarty is like a weak actress or anything. But, like, I think she's no, never had a the chance to shine always like boring, that. boring, kind of. Yeah. Like, exactly. Like, like she had like kind of a negative arc mm -hmm. this season yeah. not in like a yeah. super bad way but in like a that was her whole storyline was like she's actually not as perfect as she thinks she is and it was it came to a very satisfying uh point when she was able to act opposite herself as a shapeshifter and i thought that was very strong performance from her so i think she agreed. had a good she had a good story this season agreed, that was agreed. perfectly yeah. succinct too so yeah. yeah i don't know i'm not I, one thing that kind of annoyed me of the season was the relationship between um, Huey and Starlight. Um, I don't know, especially the ending. Because, and this go, it kind of goes back to the writing, because again, that scene that Huey went through where he basically gets, you know, screwed over, no pun intended, by his favorite superhero. Like literal assault. <laughs> it, it, it literally assault. Like, oh, yeah. They Multiple took it as a times. joke, but that's a very traumatic scene. Well, even and, at the end, they did the same thing. It happened to him not once, but twice. Like, yeah. exactly. because with her shapeshifter version of herself, and mm. then, it, you know, the misunderstanding on her part and, and total insensitivity to what he went through. Exactly. And then again, again, making it a joke at the end, like saying, like, oh, like, we're going to smash, yeah. like, after this traumatic other exactly. shit happened. And, I, I feel like it would have been a beautiful opportunity because there was one moment where Starlight was all like, oh, you're just, you don't really love me. You only love the side of me that gets, you know, gets to have sex with you and all that stuff. And it would have been a beautiful moment. It's like, woman, I just lost my father. I just got screwed over by my uh, favorite hero. Like, what the heck? Like, who's yeah, going to talk about things that we have screwed up? I've been like, that would have been a perfectly good written moment but it was just treated like oh like he just he just like yeah i don't it's know taking it on the chin like over like, and it's over just from that, everyone things like that and it's just i don't know it's just yeah. it's one of those things where i really wish the writers or the creators really were to like i get it the humor because i know the boys is known for Aranjus humor all that stuff but they really could explore that scene and really did something deep with it like they could have really did something good with yeah. it but they just kind of said it it felt like raunchy marvel where yeah. it's like something serious happened joke yeah exactly episode yeah um but yeah i feel like we have a couple minutes left um what do you guys feel and whether or not he goes full on scorched earth <laughs> or if he feels like there's still something worth saving with like the soups and i think with the way that it kind of ended in the finale of this season uh, it shows that like okay butcher's kind of like full in on the the kessler like the jeffrey dean morgan version of his psyche that <laughs> he's like that has been like the the yeah. devil on his shoulders kind of telling yeah. him what to do <laughs> and pushing him in this certain direction i think that's what that represented for him yeah i don't like how it was executed there like i hate how the conclusion is like okay so ryan just you know has his little outburst we have to kill all soups like I, I just I kind of hate that that's kind of the conclusion that comes to him that he's like I don't, he accepts I mean, it to that point. But like, like I get he's been to facts, that extremeness. Yeah, if you, if okay, you think sorry. about the fact that like to you, yeah, no, if you think about the fact that like he has always been like that's low key always been his goal from like the beginning is like killing soups and like the the journey that we've seen of of butcher up until now has been like his willingness to like work with certain people and like see soups as human as like as more than just like these killing machines and so he's kind of been struggling with his humanity a bit and that was all kind of on ryan's shoulders at this point even though ryan didn't know that and i think that like the fact that ryan seemingly has gone down this path he's like okay yeah there's no more point so i think i, I, I mean, think it makes sense that he he all of a sudden is like yeah let me go back to square one i mean okay i don't think i have no problem with him having that conclusion i just think the way it was executed and it goes back to just execution things for me just came off as like like okay you let's forget the fact that we have a weapon that can kill homelander so why if we have a weapon that can kill homelander why do we need to kill all soups and not just kill the ones who are just dangerous you know what i'm saying i mean i know he's trying to say all soups are dangerous but clearly he's had enough experience with soups that are not all dangerous 
Like, you get my oh, point? Like, it's well, like. Well, I mean, I don't think he necessarily wants to kill all soups. I think it's just like the fact is that the virus, if it's going to be strong enough to kill Homelander, it's going to kill all the soups. I don't know like, the way it's the only... is like genocide, <laughs> but the whole point is going to genocide the all the soups. That's the yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. It's but that that's strong. like that's how they that's how they set it up. It's like the only way we can get it strong enough to kill Homelander, it will make it like an airborne thing that will kill everyone. I don't know. That's where that's where I have the. I don't know. I just feel like for him to come to that conclusion, where he's but like I mean, he's willing to take that risk. But it's also I know he's chaotic. Wait, sorry. It's also interesting because it's like why not. <laughs> It doesn't have to be strong enough to kill Homelander necessarily. It just has to be strong enough to weaken him to the point that other soups can perhaps kill him afterwards. So I feel like that was one thing I didn't that confused me slightly. Cause like that thing still looked quite dangerous for even like Yeah, I don't know. But but uh to to Chuku's point, I also thought the execution was a little weird because Ryan killing that one lady, uh the CIA lady, like Grace. First, first of all, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, I thought she was kind of dumb. Like, I, I, I was like, what, dude? Like, just, just let him walk know. a little bit, or like, do it in a way that's not so pressuring. Yeah, Ryan was like <laughs> obviously distressed, and she was still like, da -da 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 -da. Exactly. I was like, shut up, like, you're yeah, freaking yeah, him out. You know, it's a soup. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, and like, I, she I, out of everyone <laughs> should like know them pr quite well. So I, I thought that that part was a little foolish, also. Yeah, I thought it was dumb, and. And then uh, I don't. Th I think Butcher's choice is fine. I think the virus is what is influencing him a lot. I kind of feel like it's not just his bad side talking. It's sort of like the virus adopted his bad side almost. Mm. Yeah, I guess I that's like one way of looking at it. Venom or something. That's fair. That's fair. We could that that could be a, a point of view from there. But a, uh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, you can get to go. That was that was that's mainly it. Well, I was gonna kind of bring up another thing that we haven't mentioned yet and that's the inclusion of uh gen v characters oh, um, oh yeah so from the timeline of things they didn't like mention it too much like obviously there were easter eggs like this was set like 40 days or something like after the events of the finale of gen v um there were two obviously like gen v characters that were featured on it in it that are like fully... technically three yeah yeah <laughs> I can't remember them all. But yeah, they're all on Homelander's side. They're quite powerful. Um, and they they came back in the finale too, which is, I think, an important to note because the new season of Gen V is going to come out soon, right? Or at mm -hmm. least sooner than the finale season of The Boys. So it's going to yeah. kind of, everything's going to like piggyback off of each other. And like, we, we know that The Boys is going to end. Like season five is the final season. But my only worry is like maybe the final season won't be as satisfying because they want to like keep doing like spin-offs and keep doing like oh Gen V this this that. Hopefully it's not that. And hopefully the inclusion of the Gen V characters is good because you know Butcher hasn't met, you know, the rest of the students from from Gen V that are really nice and that we really love. Like who knows? Like maybe they, you know, everyone can work together and I think I, I think not to kill everyone. <laughs> Butcher is not gonna meet them because Butcher's just gonna like, kill them if he meets exactly. them. Exactly. I know exactly. it's not gonna be like it was like the first season of Stranger Things where everyone is like working independently and they finally meet up and it's so satisfying. Yeah. Like that'd be cool. Yeah. I don't I also don't think it's going in that direction. I'm just saying like it's interesting. Hopefully it's for the best and hopefully it just like strengthens the story instead of takes away but, but i thought um, the easter eggs were weak you know like well the inclusion of those characters it could have been anyone like <laughs> it didn't i don't matter. know i feel like what's his name ted uh was it ted knight tech, tech, tech knight tech knight is, yeah oh right right i guess i guess he's a gen gen v character because technically that's where we saw him in gen v right mm -hmm. yeah. i feel like his so now I have, this is where i have some mixed feelings like the way he was displayed in this season because ted knight is supposed to be like a basically supposed to be like batman which this goes back to the boys making fun of superheroes and all that stuff but i just <laughs> is, is wait, tech knight dead is, is tech knight dead yeah he's tech basically knight dead, right? died <laughs> Dude, yeah, he died. He got killed by his butler. <laughs> Guys. Exactly. We're talking about how strong soups are. And he got killed. He well, got technically, he doesn't have superpowers. Butler. He's supposed to be like Batman in terms of like, he just has like all the richness and stuff and tech and everything. 
I guess. So he can just either isn't his power like he can hear your heart or something. Oh yeah, sorry, my bad, my bad. Foolishly. Yeah. Forgot about that. He's a detective. He's just, he's just like he, uh yeah. His heightened senses. Heightened senses. Like heightened senses, yeah. Smell, uh, sight, hearing, and but feeling. This is where and this is where kind of the big issue that comes with this season where for whatever reason this season they just wrote him off this kind of like this racist rich uh a-hole and it was just kind of getting to the point where it was like like little things where it's like oh we're gonna give your money to black lives matter and he's like no and it's just like <laughs> okay what like it just it just this is where i feel like this is where i feel like they were really starting to like push the agenda and the thing about the boys is boys has always been satirical and political stuff so it's not like they're always, like it's not like this has been new right but i felt like what they did with previous seasons was it seemed more satirical on both sides of the spectrum where it was like they even in the last season they had a, a amusement park that was supposed to make fun of things that were supposed to be woke theme right but now it just seems like it went completely like alter white you know republican party like clearly this person you know um is like we're, we're making fun of this side and then we're not even going to really acknowledge the other side and i felt that was a little and then with ted keen i feel like he was the one who spin off of this because it's like in the last at least inside gen v we didn't really see that side of him he just seemed like a normal he to me he just seemed like a threatening and guy who could, normal super freak <laughs> yeah he They're just seemed like a threatening guy but now it's just oh he's just that racist a-hole he's just that rich racist a-hole and we finally get revenge on him and it's just I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be honest i don't mind like the fact that they made him just like this that type of character because i don't see much more potential for him uh in that story i and... mean my thing is like i'm okay if it if, if it if it was like if he was consistently like that that'd be one thing but I just felt like it to me the reason I feel like the reason why he was written that way was to push something. That was my problem with it. Like I didn't feel like it was a character. It was just more of let's push this thing with this character. That's where I have an issue. Like if he was consistently like that in Gen V, that'd be a different story. Then it'd be like, oh yeah, you know. Yeah, but I suppose it was supposed to be like a secretive thing, you know, because he's trying to pose as someone who's not like that. I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess. That's that's yeah. fair. I guess you could and say they that. Did, they brought. They were consistent with his sexual deviancy, right? Yeah, that, we that, saw that, that part was. Be. Yeah, but that part was consistent. But... There was a lot of things that were revealed about him. I mean, we didn't even. I don't know if they even said in Gen V two that he was that super rich. Um, but I think it. Yeah. yeah, I think maybe you know they lost a little subtlety this season for sure. Yeah, but like they... I also like get it because it's like. A lot of times the super rich can be have you know yeah quite interesting views so like you know that i get but yeah this yeah. Se this season of uh of the boys definitely won't win any points on subtlety but <laughs> <laughs> it's you know it is what it is i think that because uh, like they made direct ties to like january 6th and all of those exactly you know, like in fact yeah, you can I, even I argue the... with bobby's character is supposed to be kind of like uh what's his name um joe biden in some ways like they're like the whole joe biden parallel with him and then like i think he's much more stuff. lucid than joe biden obviously he's older <laughs> obviously but the point no, is, but... is like, there's a lot of parallels yeah. to that kind of thing yeah but it is crazy because i feel like they also like i don't know eric kripke his mind because it's also like for sure it's like less subtle they're kind of like hitting us over the head with some of this stuff but also like they're uh kind of predicting some things and that's kind of crazy that i think crazy. that on its own is kind of like weird and sometimes like a little too real and that's like my complaint about it is i'm like oh you know i you know I, anybody I watch else media to be escapist <laughs> and this is maybe a little too real sometimes did anybody else like cheer or fist pump when bobby said idiot <laughs> natural fans out there yes yes bobby <laughs> yeah. The yeah yeah that's crazy uh but yeah um there was one other thing that i was going to bring up um but i'm forgetting now but uh maybe it'll come up later but yeah i i think that um annie's storyline with um the starlighters was also like an interesting kind of social commentary aspect where um they tried to recreate the the like 
antithesis or like what what is it um they were meant to represent like antifa antifa to some yeah, degree stuff, to some degree um or they, they were getting turned to to look like antifa in, yeah in, in what way but um so yeah I thought they that have concentration was, camps <laughs> yeah i thought that was interesting um the the shapeshifter was a very was a very like unique way to portray a shaped a shapeshifter like literally ripping off the skin in order to transform into somebody else yeah that was, that was cool that um, was exactly. literally uh, another supernatural easter egg yeah that's yeah. another yeah. thing it could be <laughs> confirmed like it, it was like a yeah Steve exactly reference. yeah yeah it's, it's very similar and it has the mind and memories of everything so they can yeah. express everything like oh that's you did crazy. this thing i'm curious guys little how, op how do you guys feel about frenchie and oh, oh the yeah frenchie that was story what line. i was gonna bring up that, that was, was a very weak storyline that I'll be yeah real with you. i felt like that was a weak storyline i think that like, it was it it kind of just yeah it kind of just distracted i think from the gen like that i felt the same way that i felt about how um huey's dad like that whole storyline kind of uh was drawn out and it kind of took away from the major plot lines that we were following i felt like frenchy uh with uh his love interest in this season it, it just kind of took away because i'm because i'm like I guess we're just we just need an excuse for Frenchie to be kind of sad and depressed this whole season. Basically, they also <laughs> use it as an excuse to um, look into Kimiko's background too. Which, yeah, and that which... overall lesson is oh, how do we forgive ourselves? Blah blah blah. Some mm. of that stuff is like oh yeah, like you know oh we had to do that evil stuff, but arguably. Frenchie being in a relationship with that guy under false pretenses. Didn't have to do I think that. it's I think it's actually evil. I think that's so <laughs> effed up. And I yeah, I'm like, yeah, turn yourself in, you frog. Yeah, he didn't have to do <laughs> that. And then he wants to be sad because he has to I tell mean, yeah, you didn't have like, to get in a relationship with that alone. guy that you killed exactly. his whole family. Exactly. So what crazy. that was gross as hell. I was like, Exactly. Dude, you deserve yeah. to get shot by that guy. Yeah. So like, truly. I'm like, what? why why are we supposed to care about this storyline? So I, I I didn't care about that at all. So yeah, that was very they, weak. And then they yeah. broke him out of prison off screen. That, that yeah. was <laughs> <laughs> no. Dude, and then they revived a... Frenchico. I don't know what the shit name oh, could yeah, be, but like done, not yeah. really. It wasn't really earned. I was like, I yeah. I kind of thought it was cute last season, but now I'm like, stay away from her. Exactly. <laughs> but, but yeah, there's a lot of off-screen moments. Like for example, how did Star what's her name? Starlight knew where the the other shapeshifter was and was able to just come in and save Huey at the moment? Like it just seemed kind of yeah. weird. I think how did she, she break that, in like, there? Did she say she had his like location on or something? I think they they something, addressed something that. Something like that. Yeah, she mentioned something. But yeah, she mentioned I don't something. Know. But, but to they get were to like the... in a panic room already. Yeah, they're in yeah. a Probably panic room. It, it didn't make how, how the, I mean, He got there really quickly. Oh, <laughs> he no. got there. I was like, the Starlight has like AJ. Oh, just... no, see, if A Train was there, that would make sense. But maybe she has A Train's <laughs> powers all suddenly. Just. <laughs> Dude, an A Train redemption right there would have been sick. That would have been sick. Also, but I actually um... like what they did with the uh, a deep. Like him becoming more darker because it's like story arc. Yeah. What I like about it is just that he's always been seen as a joke character, and then this joke is where joke. something, <laughs> basically, like just a joke. Like it's like he's just a joke, but then all of a sudden, when um, Sage kind of brought that out of him, and then even Homelander, it's like now we're seeing him be like, no, no more, and just I like it. I really like it. <laughs> you know yeah, what? A Train like... should have done. <laughs> a Train should have grabbed the deep. Just like drag him to a desert or something and leave him there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know he says like I've always hated you. Oh, yeah. just finish the job, dude. You finish the job. It's like, oh, how do we kill him? I don't know. Maybe like strand him somewhere where he has no access to water for like hundreds of miles. Atrian <laughs> also, I don't know. He's not like the smartest character either. Yeah, but but Butcher was there too. I don't know, there's there's just these moments where it's like it's clear <laughs> that something can happen to certain characters but then they just like say something or like make it so convenient for characters to not die or like not have yeah. serious consequences that it, I get Truly. a little annoyed sometimes dang if we were the boys we would have solved it in one season y'all <laughs> we're so strategic exactly, look at exactly, us <laughs> exactly but then someone Actually, would kidnap Scott you know, <laughs> and then we lost RPGs, our genius person <laughs> But uh, also, like, you know how 
Huey's dad killed a whole bunch of people in the hospital. I feel like oh, there yeah. was zero consequences. consequences. Stop! No, yeah. you're right. That part was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, what are we gonna do about these? Like, yeah, it didn't seem like. like... Wait, wait, what? Like Huey didn't seem at all like sad about that or like regretful about that, and it just it seemed, seemed like... like a waste too because like they could have actually made it to where like Huey's dad is like a legitimate like. That would have been an interesting story. Issue, like a problem that they now have to solve. But they kind of just like killed him as soon as he got V. And I'm like, all right, I guess there was no point in this whole storyline. Yeah. I, I d yeah. I just feel like Huey's emotions were so weird this this season you know they, yeah they, and then like the whole thing with sense. his mom like his mom just left as soon as like, i know she's gone again yeah so all that hard work for nothing for nothing i don't know i don't know it seems Here's, weird. okay it would be <sighs> there could be a way to fix some of these nitpicks or like i don't know i might be giving like air kripke too much credit but like it seems like over the course of the seasons like things are getting like a lot more like extreme and stylized it's like kind of paralleling like what's happening like out here you know right where like people are becoming like more desensitized to like extreme news and media and and like insane like divisive politics i mean like i'm sure it kind of is I think, but also it kind of lets like the story suffer a little bit. It's like, I mean, it's what we're all saying and what we're all bringing up. But I think that could be like one explanation of like why Huey is so desensitized, desensitized to things, like why like people are just dying here and there and no one really gives a F because there's like the quote unquote, the world is ending. They even said that in the That's series. True. But it is it is a lot to like take in in one season for sure because it's like, it could have been like a more gradual buildup. But it's not. Um, but we'll we'll see. We'll see how it all culminates. Yeah, for sure. Who do you think uh, captured everyone? Well, obviously, Vought captured some people. But do you think Vought captured everyone? Other than the I think so. I think that the whole thing with so we leave off this season with Homelander's basically running the country, and he's deputized all the soups around so that they they now mm -hmm. under his like leadership. And, there's martial law <laughs> yeah there's martial law and so i'm pretty sure that it seems to me that all of this all of the boys not all of them but like the boys that we saw get captured have all been captured by some soups of one uh or another so i think that they're all kind of underneath the same like they're all going to be captured by vault by vault yeah yeah, <sighs> yeah. yeah well yeah i i really hope they do it well in the beginning like they have a really good reason for not killing them outright because at this point i don't see why not just kill them outright yeah That's the true. boys yeah yeah why wouldn't homelander just oh, I, I, no it's gonna happen well, sage mean, is gonna no it's gonna happen. sage is gonna stop and she's gonna be like no we need them because how else we're we gonna <laughs> get uh what's his name a train she's gonna be like that she's gonna use them to get a train <laughs> uh but yeah i think i mean homelander <laughs> there's a reason why homelander hasn't killed any of the boys until now i think it's not just it's not like it's not because he can't kill them it's because like there's a there is like a psychological thing to where i think that homelander feels like he needs to have these people opposing him uh who don't necessarily fear him in the way that most people do just to just so that his life is not meaningless like we, we saw the moment where um he's he realizes that he's like surrounded by all of these yes men mm -hmm. yeah he, exactly yeah and he's just like frustrated and that's when that's when he goes to get sage but like the the i think homelander part of him likes people who are willing to stand up to him and he's not willing to kill them immediately i think that's why stan edgar is alive like he didn't just kill stan edgar off because that's the kind of and then also the lady uh the one lady that he left alive in that whole when he killed everyone in the lab mm -hmm. was the one lady who wasn't really afraid of him that was like now come on now um was it jonathan or something like that like you know like you don't want to do that like the the one lady who wasn't 
afraid of him is the one that he left alive. And so I think that there is a psychological thing behind the reason why Homelander doesn't kill off the boys. Yeah, I, I, it's just like stimulation. That. Yeah, like, I that. Mm -hmm. but yeah. I do feel like there were opportunities. Well, there were moments where you know he was like trying to laser Huey to death, and and mm -hmm. yeah, exactly at the ice ice rink area, and also the you know telling the deep and noir to go to their base and take them out that's another that's another thing or another thing which doesn't involve him killing was the part where he was trying to tell ryan to like come here and then ryan just goes and i'm like you can go fast like you could stop him like why didn't he just grab ryan like i i don't know it's it maybe a cop out but <laughs> back to oc's point yeah. i think all that <laughs> stuff can 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 be um kind of accounted for with just his psyche like he's yeah. he doesn't he's not the most like logical of guys for sure we've seen that he's he's quite temperamental he's emotional that's fair um, yeah. he he's reactive for sure so that's fair. you know i, I think you know I his adhd or something believable and i also that... think that that whole ice rink scene was was bad it was like terrible <laughs> <laughs> he's like i'll give that to you yeah <laughs> i i find it most believable that they leave he leaves Butcher alive because he has like a deal with him. Exactly, I remember that. Off or whatever, but it's it's sort of like also Ryan is involved, and if he goes and kills Butcher, exactly. Butcher, Ryan would full out not want to be around him. I mean, now that Ryan knows the truth, we don't know exactly how he's going to react, but yeah, it's going to be interesting. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, any other? Last minute, what do we, uh, I, we're going to get the next season of Gen V first before we get mm -hmm. the boys. So I think the next time we talk about this universe, it'll be with Gen V. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm excited to see what happens. Um, Gen V is going to pick up after this season. So it'll be under like Homelander's martial law of the United States, uh, where we meet the Gen V characters again. So I'm definitely curious. That, that, that would be interesting. Yeah, I'm also curious because that one actor in Gen V died, so I'm wondering how that's going to tie in as well. R.I.P. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, they might recast. I would recast, but we'll see. I don't think they're going to recast that guy. <laughs> Why, not? Why not? I feel like his. I feel like he has a, a stinctual face and a stinctual voice and all that. It'd be. It'd be too weird. It'd be too weird to be like, oh, you, you did, you didn't pass away. Da, da, da. I think, I, I think mean, they really weird, are. Gonna but know, it's the, definitely been done before. Day, yeah, I know. Some... At the end of the day, like a recast is you like you recast characters for a ton of different reasons, and um, I don't think that this is necessarily any different. Um, I know that. Yeah, I think that. I mean, if I was in charge of the Gen V, I would, I would recast. I think it's uh, the character um, is more important than than the people playing the characters um from that perspective but yeah i don't know what they i don't know what they're gonna do we'll see what happens we'll see what happens well yeah uh but yeah i'm excited to see i'm excited to see it um this season was uh like we said it was a bit of a step down but i think we're we're gearing up for some exciting stuff in season five the yeah, finale there's still potential and i you there's know i like gen potential. v i like the characters in gen exactly v. i'm looking I forward them. to gen I'm looking v. forward to seeing them yeah i'm also right. looking forward to see uh sam because we've got dean so we now we need sam yeah to be i dean. know <laughs> i was gonna say earlier jared like Padalecki. oh i wonder who jared padalecki is gonna play <laughs> yeah we need jared to come in um and i don't know if misha collins might come in i, I don't think they're gonna have misha collins Let's but go, it's funny SPN, that they man. had they had <laughs> what's his face the guy who played god god was, yeah the multiplier chuck, guy chuck chuck, yeah. chuck was in yeah. it what a and step they, down chuck. <laughs> seriously and then, <laughs> and then that <laughs> one uh, <laughs> oh no that was terrible oh yeah yeah we'll see what other effed up thing jared padalecki is gonna be <laughs> <laughs> or misha collins we shall yeah. see yeah, a lot we'll to look see. forward to you'll see definitely a lot to look forward to um but yeah definitely let us know how you felt about the season down in the comments below let us know if you have any hopes or predictions for the future gen v season two or the boys season five and uh we'll meet you down there <laughs>